on the line too. Uh, Oscar, if you want to start off with information of the fight and introduce Ryan, we're ready. On the line too. I can hear them. Yeah, that's good. You're going to introduce me, Cecilia. Okay. Okay. Everyone, um, we're going to talk about Garcia Fortuna, which is going to be on July 16th at the crypto.com arena to talk more about the fight. We have chairman and CEO of Golden Boy Promotions on the line, Oscar De La Hoya. Go ahead, Oscar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Um, yes, we're uh, super excited. Um, Ryan Garcia Fortuna is uh, is coming up fast. Uh, July 16th will be once again a spectacular uh, show. Um, production will be amazing. Everything will be incredible. Ryan Garcia's uh, performances have proved over and over uh, why he is uh, one of the best uh, uh, top uh, fighters in the world today. And, and once again, he will, uh, he, will, uh, he will prove to the world why he belongs on the, on the global stage with the very best. Um, he has a record of 22-0, 18 knockouts um, from Victorville, California. Uh, this fight will be uh, exclusively uh, live uh, on the zone. Tickets are still available. And obviously with, uh, with uh, 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 Ryan's uh, star power, uh, with, uh, with the promotion uh, behind it, uh, with Golden Boy, uh, tickets are going really, really fast. Uh, we expect um, a sellout. Uh, I do want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors, um, Hennessy, Never Stop, Never Settle. I want to thank uh, Bet Online, uh, everyone who's uh, who's uh, making this event uh, uh, um, a, a huge success so far. So, uh, without any uh, further ado, I would like to uh, introduce to you uh, the uh, the future uh, of the uh, of the lightweight division, but not only the lightweight division, but the future of boxing. Ryan Garcia, how you guys doing? Thank you, Oscar. Ryan, um, any opening statements that you'd like to say to the press um, here waiting to ask a couple of questions? No, I don't have any opening statement. Okay, great. Let's get started. Um, let's start off with Jeremy Harridges from Fansided. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for uh, the time. Uh, you've had several months now working with, with Joe Goosen. Um, during that experience, and now that you've had that time, how would you say that what differentiates Joe Goosen from, from other trainers in your opinion? I think his consistency and his work ethic, uh, he definitely uh, never misses a beat and he's always uh, looking to improve or find a way to uh, better your game. And he's there all the time. The work ethic is unmatched. Even though it's only been a few months, how have you seen changes within yourself as a, as a fighter, as an athlete? Uh, I think just overall my skill level um, uh, and just me consistently training now since being off that break for a year and a half and continually training without a break. And my mind is uh, definitely up to speed on on just timing, reflexes, uh, distance control. So overall, my game is uh, much better. Thank you, Ryan, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Next, we'll have Cynthia Conte and Giandra LeBeau from the Best Women's Boxing Podcast. Go ahead, Cynthia and Giandra. Cynthia, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Okay. So Ryan, um, I know you've been getting slack about this fight and obviously this fight is the next fight in your career, uh, but Javier Fortuna is a former uh, world champion, two-time world champion, and he, a hungry fighter is a very dangerous fighter, as you know. Now, if you would be victorious uh, July 16th, does this set you up for a fight with Tank Davis? As obviously we've seen Oscar De La Hoya put out on social media, he has the money and would like to put that fight out. And, um, or would this set you up for possibly the winner of Haney versus uh, Cambosos? Um, I think it's quite obvious where uh, we're headed towards. Uh, I mean, I've spoken about it so many times. Uh, obviously, once I get past Fortuna, um, I will definitely I'm going to be campaigning for that fight with Javante Davis. And like I've said as well in the past, 
um, down to really be transparent about the negotiations, the whole process through to really prove to the people that um, I really want this fight and in no way would I not actually want this fight, that it's not a front. So or however I could be transparent legally as much as I can to show that I'm definitely willing to make the fight happen. I'm willing to do that. Uh, and yeah, I want to fight Javante Davis next after I beat Verduna. So choosing to have this transparency at this point in your career, Ryan, is it a maturity thing? Why do you think this is the path you need to forge? Would you have done your career differently, knowing what you know now, taking the social media route and being a public figure, but still reserved? Uh, I think that I'm all about the truth and, you know, the way the media has always, uh, and not even the media, just the way these managers and people just try to spin off on me. Uh, because it's so easy to look at me and say that I'm ducking, you know, we're not because of all the things I've said, but it's really been uh, set up by traps and illusions by these promoters and these managers to make it seem like I ducked out of the fight in some way when the facts are uh, just that I never ducked the fight and I just always try to make it happen. So now I just, uh, I just try to find ways to really uh, exploit the truth and just try to really, you know, you know, uh, clear the smog or clear the fog in the way of the truth and this is the way I feel like I could do it is really be as transparent as I could be at every step of the way just as I was with the cruise negotiations and it came to show that they didn't want to fight and I wasn't the one ducking regardless of people trying to always fit the narrative that I'm not trying to fight and that's really not the case. Well, Ryan, you are no stranger to social media, as we all know it. And obviously, you've seen it in the news that uh, Tommy Fury, excuse me, uh, Jake Paul is supposed to be fighting the real boxer, as they are all saying Tommy Fury. Now, um, but now we just saw that if you were to fight Tank Davis, hypothetically, after you're victorious, there was something out in social media. Don't know if this is true or not. Maybe Oscar can clarify if he's even seen it, that there was an offer on Floyd's undercard if he were to fight uh, Conor McGregor, would that even be an interest to you? Uh, I think it's fun to think because uh, that would be like the biggest fight, you know, the biggest fight in history, uh, having Conor McGregor Mayweather rematch plus myself and Javante as the co-main event. That, that to me is interesting. Uh, but is there any truth to that? Not that I heard of. I mean, you would have to ask Oscar. Mm -hmm. Oscar, real yeah. fast, can you say yes or no on that? Mm -hmm. Oscar's off the line. Oh, okay. That's fine. I'll ask him another time. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so I like the, what you're saying, continuing this theme of truth and being transparent and honest. When you say that, other than Esau Cruz, who you just mentioned, who do you think is not being truthful out there when it comes to negotiating with you trying to, to do fights outside of Esau Cruz? Mm -hmm. I think that was pretty much the only one at that point in particular because it started with the Manny Pacquiao situation with uh, Sean Gibbons. Uh, he definitely uh, blew that whole thing up. Uh, he was posting about it. He had the contract supposedly there for me. Uh, so anybody with the logical mind would want to fight Jav uh, Manny Pacquiao over Javante Davis. And honestly, he screwed that fight up for me. And that's just the bottom line truth. That's the bedrock truth. So I don't really care what anybody else says. He made it seem like he had that on lock. He had me on FaceTime with Manny Pacquiao. I mean, if, if that, I mean, well, I don't know what would be their intention to trick me, but that cost me a fight with Javante last year after Luke Campbell. But it is what it is. Uh, now I could just reflect and learn from that mistake and just don't be so gullible in, uh, in people and just focus on if they could really make it happen or if they can't. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks, Thank Ryan. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Giandra and Cynthia. Next up, we'll have Gail Frankenthal from VictorFox.com. Go ahead, Gail. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Hello, Ryan from San Diego. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing Love great. San Diego. Thank you. We love you back. Uh, <laughs> we have a fight here. Really whisper in Oscar's ear. Um, <laughs> condolences on the passing of your grandmother, which I noticed you've posted a tribute to her. And that broadens my question to the influence of family on your career, both good and bad. Can you talk a little about how your family fits in to your life today? I've always been close to my family. Uh, that's just how my mom raised me. My grandma raised us to always be close and 
we have a lot of traditions and we keep our family close, you know, whether it be our cousins, our aunts, our aunties, uncles, uh, grandmas, grandpas, everybody's pretty much a knit fit family. And we just love each other together. We pray, pray with each other and we do everything together. So this whole journey of, you know, my boxing career and, you know, and the fame and everything, really my family has been a part of it all. And they have been every step of the way. So, it is very important to me, uh, my family and my career, because uh, that's just what I love. I love family. I love everybody being happy. And I love uh, sharing all my success with everybody I love. And even people that I don't love, if they need help, I'm there for them, too. So that's just how I always grew up and I was raised. Following up on that last comment, you know, you've been very open about um, maintaining your mental health and have people reached out to you recently and and certainly you're very visible about it you and a lot of other athletes have been very visible about it talk a little about how you've navigated that with all the other things you've got to do I just really uh have taken steps with uh, surrounding good people around me that want the best for me you know that are not going to contribute to the stress and um and the pressure onto my life and uh just focusing on what keeps me happy, what songs keep me happy, even from that little small little thing. And just always being truthful with myself. Like, is this actually making me happy? Why is this making me confused? Or why is this situation? And then going going down to the truth and figuring it out, instead of running from it, I just go straight to it and focus. Really, I can't emphasize enough the truth about everything that you're dealing with. And, you know, you find happiness in, in that. You find happiness in figuring things out, even if they're a little harder to figure out or uh, removing people that you don't need in your life. I'm going to ask Cecilia to indulge me one more question. Give us some of those songs that make you happy. Uh, Free Falling from Tom Petty. Um, what else? Uh, you got Michael Jackson. Uh, what's the, uh, remember? No, not Remember the Time. Uh, it's a Man in the Mirror. Uh, you got R. Kelly. I know R. Kelly's in bad light, but uh, I believe I could fly. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> but um, yeah, not a support of what he does, but uh, that song is really good. <laughs> good. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Good luck to you. Right. Have a good one. Gail, uh, next up, we will have Miguel Maravilla from Fight News. Go ahead, Miguel. Hey, what's up, Ryan? First of all, man, how has this training camp been? This is your second camp with Joe Goosen. What um, what have you learned in the process, and what makes him different? Mm, I think uh, what have I learned? I definitely have uh, found it in myself to improve my skill level, not only power, and speed, but um, just foot, foot not, even, not even footwork, mainly control in the ring. Like I'm just a more seasoned fighter. You know, and I, I know what to expect even more so. Uh, but I think that's more of a testament to me continuously training. Uh, but credit to Joe for being every step in the way with me. I mean, he's a real road warrior. Uh, if I wanted to go to war with anybody, I definitely would want Joe Goose in there with me because uh, he's not going to he's not going to backtrack. You know, he's going to be there every step of the way and we're going to figure out any situation. He's a very smart, intelligent man. And uh it can't point to one thing that he's helped me learn. I think to all things, even outside of life, he's been a pretty good father figure for me. Even though I have a father, but I'm saying like another father figure. Lastly, what um, what what, how do you prepare for a Javier Fortuna? Uh, just pretty much watch his fights and it's, uh, and kind of have a little kind of a base game plan but honestly when I'm in there I'm just gonna pick him apart and um, I mean there's so many ways I could destroy him so it's really uh, whatever unfolds in front of me. Thank you. Miguel yep. uh, next up we will take questions from Adrian Romero from FISports.tv go ahead Adrian. Hey Ryan how you doing? Hey how you doing? Good. Um, so in your last fight in April, um, it, that was the first time that you went all 12 rounds um, in your career. So what did that do that for you? Did that make you change your game uh, in any way or make you adjust in any way? 
Yeah, I think that I'm able to base my uh, my overall game plan a little bit better um, for a 12 round fight. Uh, conditioning wise, I've created techniques on what I've learned throughout a 12 round fight on what moments and what rounds that uh, you could feel a little bit more, uh, I guess, you're a little bit more tired that, uh, and then uh, past that certain point, uh, you get your second win. So there's little things that I've been able to construct in my mind and then evaluate and then have a solution for when training. So now I feel even more comfortable in a 12 round fight and I'll be able to show you uh, what I've learned and what I've been working on based on that. Awesome. Awesome. And um, I'm and the best. That's it. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not I like, kidding. I, like I am the best. I like that too. Um, and I know you have to get through Javier Fortuna first, but why do you want to fight Tank Davis so bad? Uh, it's not that I want to fight him so bad. I'm not desperate to fight him. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry to show the world that I'm the best fighter in the division. I feel like he's the best fighter other than myself in the division uh, with speed, power, accuracy, and IQ. I think he's up there, but I, I'm just that much better, and I'm going to separate myself from him, and I'm going to make it look very easy when I'm in the ring with him, and I'm just eager to show people that um, I'm more than meets the eye, that I'm really uh, a much better fighter than you may perceive it as. And when you're in the ring with me, you feel it right away. So uh, – I want to show Javante Davis that personally too. Uh, I think that he uh, he uh, he's very confident that he could beat me. So I want to see him. I want to see him show me why. You know, I'm done with the talking. I'm ready to handle it in the ring. And if he doesn't do it, well, we could see that he didn't really want it. So uh, I'm really I'm really now you know in a good place where I want to take that step and uh, I want to destroy him and you know take my spot as the face of boxing I think whoever wins that fight will become the face of boxing after that thank you Ryan appreciate it yeah. look thank you Adrian. thank you so much um next up we have Ismail Abdusalam from beatsboxysmayhem.com go ahead Ismail thank you uh, Ryan, after your last fight, Bernard Hopkins, he was in the ring with you and he mentioned making every moment count going forward. And I think you know now how difficult it is to make these bigger fights with bigger fighters, even in your, even in your division. Looking back on it, do you feel it was a missed opportunity when you and Devin Haney were on the same, same network to make that fight happen? Um, at the time, reflecting it back on it, maybe a little bit because um, we could have easily made that fight happen. But again, I'm a go for it all or don't go for it, uh, nothing. So, you know, I see an opportunity to fight Javante Davis. Of course, you know, that's what I would want to pursue because I think that's the bigger fight and um, the more dangerous. Fight. And I enjoy fights like that. I know, you know, Devin, um, he's a very skilled fighter, but as in terms of, you know, success on the event and then how you know how exciting it will be for myself to me in the ring it wasn't at that time but now you know looking back I know I could have had a shot to you know take that you know title and then I could have fought Cambosis for all the titles say I won that fight when I did beat when I would beat Devin Haney but now I missed that opportunity so you know there's pros and cons to every decision you make all you could do is move forward and think of the next best move that you can make Got it. So last question is, you mentioned Gervonta being the, the more dangerous fight. So I think a lot of the casual takes we hear is that people think because you've been down before that you wouldn't be able to take his power. Now, on the other hand, with your power, we've never really seen Tank get hit before. I wanted to get your opinion on that. What do you think about Tank's punch resistance and how do you think it'll go comparing your power to his power? Well, I think that uh, every fight is... Uh is uh is different in a way where uh some people for some reason they just don't get hurt or you don't catch the guy with that certain shot so at the time that luke campbell caught me he's a 510 guy with a, a long reach you know javante's not that guy so who's to say that he lands that same punch you know it's kind of comical to say that uh because one guy lands it another guy will land it you know uh, or, or that i can't learn from a certain punch, you know what I mean? Coming from a southpaw stance. So people kind of look over the obvious on improving one and two, the attributes of a fighter does matter at the end of the day. But again, I'm not here to, you know, teach anybody about boxing. I'm just here to show everybody, you know, if you could, uh, if you could do what I go to do and do it better then go hop in there. <laughs> show me that, <laughs> show me how good you are. <laughs> it's just funny. Absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. Best of luck with Fortuna. You too, man.
Thank you. I mean, not YouTube, but for <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ismael. Uh, next, we have Albert Perez from the Sporting News. Go ahead, Albert. Hello, Ryan. How's it going? Good afternoon. Hey, yeah. how you doing, sir? Hey, how you uh, doing? How's it going? I'm not. I'm not that old man. I'm not. <laughs> You're never. All right, right. Who said you were old? And now I just was, the the connotation was, sir. You know when they call me old, sir. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you. <laughs> no, nah, no worry. I'm joking. I'm joking. Right. I'm joking. All right, right. Uh, first of all, you say that that you could uh the the destroy that you feel that you could destroy Fortuna, but tell tell me in the game plan and the videos that you have seen with with your coach, how could you describe him as a fighter? Uh, his his two lo his two last losses have come against good fighters uh, and they've gone twelve rounds against Eastern. I'm and great. Against I'm Jojo. a great fighter. I'm a great fighter. There's a big difference. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show everybody the difference between me and Jojo Diaz and Robert Easter Jr. That's gonna be the main difference. So you'll take him out earlier? Nah, I mean I feel like nine, nothing's guaranteed in life, but ninety nine point nine 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 percent. Okay, tell tell me, Jojo. Get that, Jojo. Sorry, Ryan. Sorry about that, Ryan. Uh, tell me, obviously you're gearing for superstardom to be the face of boxing and all that. But how, uh, being a, a fighter of Mexican roots, how important is you? Is it for you to connect with those with those Mexican fan base? Considering that behind Canelo, outside of you and uh, Virgil, and now Ban Rodriguez, there there is there isn't much of of uh, fighters with Mexican roots that have a potential to be you know megastars. Yeah, I think it's important because it's uh, my heritage, my culture, and uh, I'm just here to be myself. And, you know, if if my people, you know, don't love me and they reject me, that's on them. I got a heart for everybody. So I'm just here to show love to everybody and just be as, you know, truthful uh, within myself and just hope that everybody could uh, – Hope everybody could see my heart and how genuine it is. And if if nobody if they can't, well then um, that's on them. You know, one more which which I meant to add to the first one. How how long how much how longer do you see uh, uh, yourself at one thirty five? If if you don't get those big matches that, that you want, do you see yourself making the leap to one forty or even to one forty seven, which you know Oscar Oscar did, and he you know he was a he was a great star one forty seven. Uh, depending on uh, if the Cervante fight goes down, uh, we'll see what we do after that. Uh, uh, whether it be at 140 or 135, um, to fight Devin Haney or Loma, uh, we'll see because uh, I think those are the opportunities are that I hope to have in front of me after Gervonta Davis would be either Loma or Devin. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Uh, next, we have Mike Reda from 26 Sports. Go ahead, Mike. Thank you, and uh, how you doing today, Ryan? Good, how you doing? Doing good as well. All right, so first question, this is obviously now your second camp with Joe Goosen. Uh, how much quicker was it without, obviously, the adjustments from the first camp to get you know a rhythm going, to get everything, the game plan and everything set up and just start working on what you're actually going to do on fight night? Uh, it was so easy. Um, the because I only had two months of kind of free time, not even two months. I was training every day, even though, and uh, my body has, uh, from what I see, uh, definitely turned the corner. I look like a, I look too strong for 135. I look like a, I look like a cheat code for 135. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm too damn big. Uh, so I just feel like I'm growing into my, uh, I would say, you know, the difference between a young man and a man. I think I transitioned into, uh, you know, that strength has really been building and you could see the difference and you could feel the difference and everything is looking sharp. My timing, my speed, my accuracy, um, my understanding of defense and just understanding of where I'm at in the ring at all times. And I just never feel confused when I'm in there. So uh, I'm at a really good place. And I guess the only thing left to show is to, to show it in the ring. And I'm, I'm so excited because I want to do it already, but it's just time, you know what I mean? Two weeks, two weeks and three days. Oh, and a uh, second question. Now you're, you, you fought before in Southern California, but this one is a big one. You're going to be fighting at, I'm sorry for everybody else, but I'm a Laker fan. It's always going to be, the, it's always going to be the Staples center. You're fighting at, at the crypto, whatever arena, how big and important is it for you to, 
have not just a good performance, but maybe just a spectacular performance in front of your own crowd and just because of the arena that it's going to be at? Uh, I think because I'm from Southern California, I grew up, you know, here my whole life uh, from Victorville all through the IE and through, you know, LA County. I think that uh, it's very important for me uh, to have a great event and just to bring everybody I know out, uh, especially in that arena, Stable Center. You got, you know, legends as Kobe Bryant, who I definitely admired his work ethic as, you know, Mamba mentality uh, obviously means something to me because I have that same type of mindset, you know, just have that killer mindset. Just don't let anything, you know, not one day pass you by without making the best of it. So I expect something magical to happen that night. That's where legends were made. You know, that's Shaquille O'Neal that was in that, you know, stadium. Everybody that's a legend came through there. So I think it's my time to shine. And I, you know, hope that I do something amazing. Definitely. And, uh, you know, you speak about the Mamba mentality, man. I got that uh, Kobe Mamba mentality tattoo on me as well. So yeah, I, I, nice. I, feel, I feel that. So, uh, yeah, man, thank you for your time, man, and good luck. And, uh, you know, hope you do well on, the, on July 16th. Yep. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Mike. Um, next up, we have Jalen Dominguez from J Box Den. Go ahead, Jalen. Jalen. Thank you. I appreciate it, Cecilia. Um, first of all, thank you, Ryan, for allotting some time today. Um, so I wanted to ask you, because I feel like since the beginning of your career, everyone has had something to say about where you're at, where they think you should be at, um, you know, trying to maybe even give unsolicited advice. But given the fact that not everybody is aware of or maybe even cares about the, the difficult nuances involved in boxing, specifically with business, um, where would you personally characterize where you're at right now in your career? And how would you how would you explain where you're at and where you want to be at in the next few years? Um, I feel like, I feel like I'm a mixture. Uh, I'm a mixture of a money sign. Plus I'm, I'm just, I'm not, you know, I'm not used to being like, you know, everybody trying to make specific moves for me. I'm here to kick people's asses. I'm here to drop people and just knock them out. So, you know, you got you got me conflicting with everybody trying to make the best business moves possible and just me wanting to whoop everybody's ass. So that's really where I'm at right now. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And good luck. Looking forward to watching the fight. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Thank you, Jalen. Um, next up, we have Daniel Yanofsky from the Sporting News. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Ryan. How are you doing today? How are you doing, Daniel? Good. Thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with all of us. Um, there's, there's the reports of over the years of you saying that you would retire early, or around 26, I believe it was originally. Uh, do you still have that intent by the time before you turn 30 to retire from boxing, even if you're not able to get all the matchups that you were that you are in, interested in? No, I need to fulfill everything I need to fulfill in the ring. And then I, then I'll retire. You know, I think I need to just beat everybody that I want to beat. That, that that's the best fighters in the division that everybody says I can't beat. For whatever reason, their reasonings are, I think once I fulfill everything I need to do in the ring, then I'm going to retire, whether it be 26 or 30, whatever that age is. Once I'm done, I'm done. So whatever it takes, you're not going to uh, you're not going to stop at that specific point. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to stop unless everything's fulfilled. OK, and uh, you had that relationship with Eddie Reynoso and Canelo Alvarez and obviously both, uh, both sides have been saying words towards each other about matchups with Canelo and uh, Triple G, yourself mm -hmm. and Daniel, Daniel yeah. can we move on to a different question? We're all here to talk about Ryan and Fortuna and the fight. Uh, yes, uh, then then thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Daniel. Have a good one. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Ryan, we have two more reporters left. Um, first up, oh. we have Ivy's Habaderas from Hooked on Boxing, and then we'll take Chris from Timmy Book Sale right after, and then we will be concluded with the call. Go ahead, Ivy. Awesome. Hey, Camp, how are you? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. So just one quick question. What's the biggest advantage you have over Fortuna? Say that one more time while you were breaking up. Sure. What's the biggest advantage you have over Fortuna? 
there's so many um let me see <laughs> i would say uh i would say uh speed i have uh, way more speed than him that's my biggest advantage thanks champ yep Thanks, Ivy. And your final question will come from Chris from TV Book Sale. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Eh, buenas, buenas tardes, Ryan. Eh, yes. Estás de regreso aquí en el Staples Center, aquí en Los Ángeles. Eh, y y sigue, sigue sonando ese nombre de Gervonta Davis. Eh, ¿Qué podemos esperar con Javier Fortuna? Y luego, ¿qué mensaje le mandas a todos los que te están apoyando cuando tú pelees con Gervonta? Um, I right. think you said I think you said uh, you're going to be fighting at Staples Center against Javier Fortuna and you're going to fight Javante Davis next possibly and you wanted me to comment on that I think you said that all right uh, <laughs> yes yes uh Ryan did you say something that, like that yes he said that to an effect so he basically asked you okay. about fighting at crypto.com um, how you foresee that fight coming along and the support you'll feel from the fans there. And if you feel that after that fight, if fans will support you going against Tank Davis. Perfect. Uh, I knew it was something like that. So uh, I feel excited to fight at the crypto.com arena. Obviously, uh, I expect that, you know, the people that I know and love to come support. Um, and, uh, you know, after I, obliterate a Javier Fortuna in a fashion that captures, you know, the attention of everybody. I hope that they come support me when I beat Javante Davis, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, whether they support or not, I'm going to do my job and uh, sleep both of them. Chris, you're on mute. Uh, gracias, champ. Uh, a message to the fans in Spanish? Yes, gracias, mis hermanos. Uh, te amo mucho, te quiero mucho, uh, si se pueda, in everything we do. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, so that was our last. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, Ryan, that was our last question. Do you have any awesome. words? I uh, just want you guys to uh, understand that uh, I'm going to have no mercy. So prepare, you know, when you're writing to see that and uh, that uh, you keep your cameras, you know, on fast mode, I'm going to be swinging. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, so much for have a good one. today. Have a good day and have a good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Right. Love you guys. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Recording stopped.